Adult language and themes ahead. Listener discretion is advised. Stop with the doom scrolling and put down your phone. It's time for Going There. Taboo Topics are back on the table. Hey everyone, this is Matt. Welcome to the Going There podcast bonus episode. We have with us in the studio, Lindsay, my wife. My wife. Hello. And we have with us two very special guests. They are the hosts of their own podcast, Wendy and Juan, and we are talking to them from Japan, which is, I think that's our furthest uh, connection that's so far. That's pretty cool. Or at least close, yeah. Well, the earth is flat, so they're on the other side of the square. Okay. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> <Of course. laughs> so, guys, thanks so much for joining us. Why don't you tell our audience about your show? My name's Wendy, and I'm the co-host of the Don't Tell My Grandma podcast. And I'm joined here by my wonderful husband. Aww. Yeah. We started podcasting, how long has it been? Almost a year and a half now. And we've been trying to bring candid conversations to the table that maybe our grandmas wouldn't want to hear. Nevertheless, we proceed to bring uncomfortable fun conversations that we hope our listeners can benefit we feel like we have a lot of interesting uh points of view because we come from different upbringings and different cultures and we met in tokyo uh, where we also were exposed to a lot of different people and uh, ways of thinking and so i feel like it was natural for us to feel like we should definitely share the conversations that we have it's always fun and enlightening and i feel like that's what our listeners appreciate the most it's just that they feel like they're in the table with us having a conversation with their friends and i want to add that we started our podcast during the whole quarantine the start I think of the a lot quarantine. of people did so yeah, yeah. yeah. We decided <laughs> like, hey, this is the best time. <laughs> Why you know? not? Yeah. Right? right. We don't have anything else to do, so it was it worked out really well. So, where are you guys from originally? I'm from Arizona. I was adopted from China, but I lived my whole life in Arizona. Went to college in California, and shortly after, a couple years after working in Arizona, I moved to Japan. And I'm I'm from Dominican Republic. Uh, I've been here in Japan for about almost six years now. And uh, yeah, I've lived most of my life in in DR. Yeah. Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo representing. Yay. Yeah. (laughs) So what we wanted to chat with you guys about is uh, cultural differences in relationships. And I think you guys are a great example of that and how it can work really well. There's a lot of times where I think relationships, the cultural differences between the two families or the two people end up sabotaging the relationship. Some of it is expectations. Well, they better convert. They can just drop that baggage at the door Mm -hmm. and they can become one of us. That's not what relationships are about, right? It's about uh, loving the person for who they are. Lindsay and I are both obviously very boring white bread people. So (laughs) I wouldn't say boring. (laughs) I've dated people, and so has she, that are from different cultures. Okay, so for example, I dated some, a few Jewish girls. And I remember they never got far enough for us to talk too deeply about it. But it was kind of, you know, would they convert or would you convert? And I'm like, why does who has to convert? Who gives a shit? You know, I'm not deeply religious. I'm spiritual. It's not like, wait, you don't you don't believe in Jesus. Oh, Oh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's like, are you a good person? Yeah. okay. I don't really care. (laughs) But Lindsay, you dated a Greek guy. I did. I did. Boy, it's been it's been a while. It's been over 10 years ago. But yes. I dated um, someone who was first generation American, Greek Orthodox family for about three years. And my relationship did get to the point where it was talking about if it were to get more serious, what would that look like? And there was an expectation to convert. And that was... uh, And when you say convert, I mean, that's like Catholic, right? It's the Greek Orthodox Catholic. It's the Greek Orthodox Church, yes. So it would be converting from me who was raised as very like Methodist kind of whatever. Uh, We really weren't that into church. Always like Matt have been more spiritual than religious. Going to, you know, making this big shift. If you want to get married into this family, you will convert to Greek Orthodox and you'll raise your children in the church. For me, though, I think that was a big stopping point. In the relationship, not that that was the linchpin, there were definitely other things that caused the relationship to end, but 
when I realized I wasn't just going, oh, sure, yeah, that'll be fine, to, oh, crap, I might actually have to do this, and I'll have to get baptized again and go to classes. And it, it reminds me of um, Charlotte in Sex and the City when she converts to <laughs> Judaism for oh. her <laughs> husband. <laughs> going to the classes and, like, learning all of that stuff, it was like, whoa, that's a lot. And I, I, I just... I wasn't and comfortable while, with while, it. And while part of it is kind of nice that you're like, I'm willing to do these things for the person I care about. At the same time, it's like you're a nesting doll and they're just kind of putting you in the mm. nest. They they want to turn you into one of them, which... One uh, of them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> one of us. One of, one us. of us. One of us. <laughs> oh, you guys actually get that reference. Hardly anybody does. Of course. Does. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I also think, too, there is something to be said about, like, the, the culture and, and having that cultural um, desire and tradition to have the people who come into the family convert. I can see that side of it, but that other person would either have to not have a strong tie to any religious yeah. group, you know, and they're not the only ones who, of course, expect people who are not of the faith to do to come into that. Not at all. But family. there is the expectation that now you're going to be all of these things. And then they're going to tell you when you're going to have children. Then mm. they're going to tell you how to do this. And that's the problem. And, and and I get it. It's a balancing act because it's like you want your family to embrace them and you want them to fit into your family. But more importantly, you want your family to embrace them for who they are, not necessarily for them to embrace your family. I care more about people respecting and caring about my significant other than I do if she necessarily mm -hmm. likes all of them. Because let's be honest, family, I don't like all of them yeah. all the time, <laughs> you know? So how about you guys? Did you experience any of that kind of stuff, even in past relationships? Well, yeah, uh, I wanted to say first that, like, I think a lot of people feel that dynamic of like a family having the expectation of this new potential member having to adopt this new culture of this new religion. It's mostly the the problems usually arise when what they're trying to make this person adopt is a religion. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's usually what the problem is. Like, yeah. oh, you have to convert yourself to towards this other religion that we in our family have internalized. Like it's it's part of who we are. Yeah. That it that there's a lot more friction there. That for example, oh, um, this is our culture. We gather together every Sunday and like family dinners, and we we are more open to uh, visiting each other. And let's say you come from a culture where you're very distant with your family. Like you left your house at 16, and you you call your parents maybe once a month and stuff like that. So th those changes of culture, for example, when I came here to Japan, there were a lot of things that I had to consider in terms of like, okay, if I marry a Japanese person, there's a lot of things that are expected of me. that are cultural, not, rel not religious. Like I have to present myself to the family when the, the relationships get serious. And that, then that means that marriage is uh, soon to come. Like you have to give gifts and you're also expected to receive stuff like the mar the wedding is supposed to be paid. Like the dowry yeah, and all exactly. that There's stuff. There's a lot of things that, yeah. to me, they're more palatable that like religious expectations are like you have to go to church every Sunday and uh, you have to mm -hmm. uh, dress in a certain way. That's something that I wasn't very comfortable with, but a lot of, a lot of the things that usually involve a different culture relationship or a marriage are usually just cultural stuff and those those are much easier to regulate. Yeah. And I feel like that's that was something that I was comfortable with. Depending on the culture and depending on the who. Right. right. Especially when you have cultures that are, you know, for example, misogynistic mm -hmm. or you have a culture that has some racism in it or you have cult I mean, those can be problematic too. But you're right. When it's a basic when we're just talking about basic culture, I agree. Religion <laughs> as I often say on the show, religion mucks everything up. So mm -hmm. I, I take it neither of you were raised super religious or at least you didn't carry any of that into adulthood? Not at all for me. My my family is very much spiritual. My mom is, she doesn't believe in God at all. She said, Wendy, God is dead. <laughs> now go meet a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything before go meet a nice man. <laughs> That's exactly how it was. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, um, my family is, I would say it, fall into being very religious it's it's very cultural in my in dominican republic yeah 
uh, it's a very Catholic based uh, culture. My mom was always like, it was more of a community to her that just like part of her life. She doesn't have that attachment of my life is defined by religion. She's just like, I like the friends that I have at church. Right. So she never really like wanted us to be very related to religion or like go to cat Catholicism and all the, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know Catechism. the terms and stuff. Right. So she didn't care about the ritual aspect. Exactly. Of it. She mm -hmm. cared about the community aspect, yeah. which is to me, not religion. That's the beautiful part about yeah. it. Congregation is important when you can congregate about something yeah. that isn't like, well, if you don't believe on everything yeah, on this you're, pillar, you're, you're going, going to, to hell. hell. Huh. Yeah. Have either of you guys ever experienced in past relationships cultural differences that were odd or is this your first like wow we're really dating somebody very different no 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 i dated a lot of people from different cultures like i had the opportunity to expose myself with n not that way not not expose myself <laughs> that's exactly i was like I was like, yeah, I was I was warned about you. <laughs> no, no, He's no, exposing no. himself right now. <laughs> just for the listener, he was wearing a trench coat for the first half of this discussion, and now yeah. it's just you told, just slipped <laughs> you told, <laughs> you told. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I got to meet a lot of people with different cultures and points of view. After you came to Japan. After I came to Japan, yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you in the Dominican because I know it's a big tourism spot, but mostly like oh no, man, know, like uh, in the resorts and stuff like that. If you see a bl a blonde person with blue eyes, it's like oh my god, dude, what is this guy here? Oh, so different. Yeah, I know. That's what happened when I was there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. First hand yeah. experience. Maybe it was you. Oh. Yeah. oh. Okay. So yeah, um, when I came to Japan. I got to meet a lot of different people. From more than just the Japanese culture, too, yes. right? Japan's kind of like a melting pot, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's a big right. hub. And Tokyo is the hub. It's yes. It's international yeah. hub. Before COVID, right? Because it's completely different right now. And I dated people here in Japan that had expectations of me. They wanted me to become this, like, shell of a Japanese kind of person. Like, oh, you need to have a nine-to-five you you need to uh, dress in a certain way. You need to learn Japanese perfectly. You need to like. There's a lot of cultural things here, like certain ways to. You have to bring gifts every time you visit family and friends and stuff. So there's a lot of things that were a bit odd to me. I was very open. I'm still very open. And so is the trench coat. If you could just close it again, that'd be great. All right, all right, all right. I'll help you. I'll do there, this, is not, this is not the right crowd. Okay. <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, uh, if, if it was more than audio, people would just love this show. We would have just like went up in ratings <laughs> tenfold. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's kind of like the acceptance versus the assimilation. I accept your culture mm -hmm. and I love you for your culture and I will play into it to a point. I'm not going to pretend to be somebody I'm not. I think that can be really harmful, uh, whether it's religion or even what you said. I, I, I dated a girl not from Japan, but she was Taiwanese. Uh, she told me about how her mother, that she would tell her like this story, always marry down because this man will put you on a pedestal and treat you nice and you'll be a princess and he'll give you all his money. Wow. And I'm like, this is your like bedtime story. Oh, wow. To her, it was like this fond memory, but it was very cold to me from a trying to be non-judgmental place because I talked to her about this I just found it really bizarre and and, and I'm going I, that's not my thing like I don't want to be in that relationship where there's these expectations of service I guess is kind of right. where I was at with it if there's things you want from me if I were your husband or even just boyfriend like I will do those things as long as we're honoring each other and taking care of each other, not me doting over it. Like, that's just never been me. I'm not <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> you did bring me toilet paper today, so that was really helpful. You had to go downstairs for it, too. That's so. love. Yes. When your spouse is in the bathroom and they run out of toilet paper and you're like, I got you. Yeah. That, that's so true. That's so true. You know what? That's marriage. I think we just defined it right there. You know it's going downhill if they don't show up for you with the toilet paper. It's like, oh, sorry, I'm too, I'm too busy. Oh, you're like, what? Please. I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> this goes for every culture, but especially outside of the white community, I would say is a bigger question because uh, like racism or bigotry, have you guys experienced that from a family of somebody who you dated? Because I, I grew up with 
with accepting, very accepting parents and, and grandparents. But man, I was told a long time ago by my grandfather, you're not allowed to marry a black girl. And I'm like, first of all, Merry Christmas. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was just kind of like, well, what's the big deal? You know, because obviously we grew up in a very different time. It wasn't that they thought less of them. They just thought cultures or the races aren't supposed to mix. Mm-hmm. While my grandfather is like deep Italian, married my grandmother. It was just like, you know, white. But it was like, well, you know, European white is European white. I experienced very similar messaging from certain members of my family yeah. as well. And I had many an argument at the dinner table, especially on vacation, just ruin it a little bit. Really just asking and trying to debate that because it it never made sense to me. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. You can't racism never makes sense when you critically analyze it. It's the unwillingness to to question the status quo. I will say my story has a happy ending. My grandfather, within a couple of years of his death, suffering really bad. I'll never forget this moment. My grandmother and I who she was the sweetest lady in the world. And I remember she was kind of saying something like, Matt, I I guess it would be okay if you dated a black girl. I just I don't know. I was just always told racists shouldn't mix, and I and she and she was like struggling with it, and I and I'm like, this is so weird. My grandfather is in the car waiting for. He's like, come on, let's go. (laughs) Sticks his thumb out the window, gives me a thumbs up, and goes, Matt. You could marry a black girl. <laughs> Was that like a contentious topic in your in your family? Like, but what? But what if I dated a black girl, Dad, Grandpa? It's one of those conversations as a white person you do have with your family really? at some point. Yeah. If you're if taboo topics aren't on the table, you don't know. Right. That's why I think anti racism is is important because if it's not taught that all races are equal, that all religions are equal, if it's not taught that, well. I actually asked my mom, I said this early on one of our other episodes, because we grew up around like no black people. And we went to this new school. There were suddenly all these different people. It was much more diverse. And I went home and asked my mom, is my friend allowed to spend the night? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, he's black. And she's like, yes. Why would you even ask Mm -hmm. that? But the problem is we don't know. Like, because we see, we learn racism through nuance things, Mm -hmm. but we're not Hot yeah. against it. Right. Yeah. Some of us are actually told, well, have your fun, but don't, you know, don't get married. Have either of you felt that from other people who you've dated, not necessarily them, but their families and stuff? Because I know I, I've, I've seen that a lot in the white mm-hmm. community mm-hmm. and it's really, it's really sad. Right. And, and again, there's racism against white people too. I've seen that as mm-hmm. well. But have you guys ever experienced any of that? I can't say that I have. I'm extremely fortunate to have been raised in a quite liberal, I call it the liberal gem of Arizona. I was exposed to different cultures and my parents are white, but they're very open-minded and they always raised us to be open to other cultures as well. However, I do often think about, since I am adopted, I think about, especially now that I'm in Asia, how my life would have been if I would have stayed in China and had Chinese parents have lining up all of these expectations for me, lining up suitors. You would have probably only been able to marry a Chinese man. Exactly, exactly. And I've made friends. I have a, a good friend from China who lives in Japan now, and she basically is in Tokyo to escape her parents wow. and escape that, you know, that plan that they have for her to marry some rich Chinese man and become a housewife so I think about that and it just makes me feel so grateful for how my story ended up your story is going how my story is going right Right. (laughs) that's right (laughs) it's not not the finish line yeah yeah. that's actually really good to hear because especially as we're seeing like all this like anti-Asian hate that's been going Mm -hmm. on recently between the coronavirus misinformation and And the, you know, the hate campaigns that especially happened. That's awesome that you didn't experience that. I'm really happy to hear that. I can say that I have met people in the U.S. that have sexualized me. And I've I've seen. Yeah, I've been with people who have done that in front of me who are there where they are actively seeking out only Asian women and manipulating Mm -hmm. them. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, I had to experience that and learn the hard way. But now I'm much more aware. I know myself. I know my limits. And I'm hoping that I can help other people escape 
being victimized in that way, at least by talking about it. That is such an important thing, especially like what happened with the shooting at the mm. uh, at the spa. It was like a month and a half ago. It wasn't that long ago, and it feels yeah, so well, long. Ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, COVID time doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're, we're living clock. in a wormhole. Yeah, COVID <laughs> clock. I like that. I haven't heard that. That's good. I don't know what it is, but yeah, in American culture, especially Asian women mm-hmm. are highly fetishized. Mm-hmm. I know white people who fetishize black people mm-hmm. and black people who fetishize white people. But again, they treat it as a fetish. So it's like, I don't actually accept you. This is my dirty yeah. little secret or something behind closed doors. And we talked about that with transsexuals mm-hmm. too. Like Correct. The idea yeah. is like, there's there's men, the guys who live on the DL, as they say, and they, they'll play around with these people behind closed right. doors. And then that's where violence comes in. Mm-hmm. That's where mistreatment comes in. So that's really sad. And, and I think that's awesome that you talk about it and they're willing to speak up about it and educate other people because that... That is a thing. And there's so many people fighting. And that's not racism. It's like, it's nuanced in the sense that, well, that's just what I'm attracted to. No, but y- y- there's a difference. Right. Mm-hmm. Respect is the part that's missing. Right. When you feel like the person is, when you're being treated as an inferior, then that, I think that kind of draws the line. When you're being led on to believe that someone cares about you, but you're seeing them mistreating other people. And you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, to answer your question, like for me, surprisingly, Dominican culture have some shades of uh, racism. And I think that's something that's known in, in the international culture in, in, in a ways. But I think it's also overblown because of our relationship with Haiti. It's the the country that we share the island with. I know for a fact that like in our in my culture, people are told not to marry someone who's darker. Even though we are, for all intents and purposes, outside of the country, we're all black. Yeah. But there are different tones. There's a, like there's a lot of uh, diversity in, in the Dominican Republic, and we also, uh, by the way, have a, a Asian community in 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 some part of the country. So there is a mix of everything. But you're not expected to, as they say, quote unquote, darken the the blood mm-hmm. because. Mm-hmm they see like lighter skinned people as better. They've been they've been indoctrinated, they've been told that for so long by culture, by oppression, many things. By the white people who showed up on the island and told <laughs> them that they were better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like we were occupied for a few years uh, from uh, by the US. Yeah. They don't feel like it's a bad thing. They just feel like oh, I mean it's it's, just, it's natural. Of course you want your kids to be light. Like, why would you want your kids to be darker? Every culture has some form of racism. Yeah. We never see it as bad. Yeah. Just like when our grandparents told us, it's just how the world works. Mm -hmm. And so racism, of course, never feels like racism when that's what you were raised on. Yeah. We have to start looking at racism differently, the way we look at other cultures differently. We have, in some ways, made it taboo to talk about those things and even to question it. We should be able to have this conversation right. about skin tones and why that was bothersome. Because then maybe so we can help somebody learn about themselves and question, well, wait a second, why do I think this? And to not feel bad with something that was ingrained in you. To try to place a cultural burden on an individual is just so silly. It was something that somebody else created. We're, we're just kind of living it. It's not always this like innate thing for us to want to question things, yeah. especially if you're living a happy life. Why would I bite the hand that feeds me? I mean, God's made had me a good life. Like, let's just do it. Yeah, that's very true. So I think that's great that you guys are able to talk through uh, some of those things and and acknowledge it without being completely like, so screw everybody back in the DR. Yeah. I think in our case, we are actually going through the U.S. immigration process as we speak from Japan. Oh, gosh. Yeah, we're... I mean, it's not easy, but it's worth it. We're finding that it's worth That's it. That's how and we see it, yeah. Especially because of the familial support that we have on either we side. We are extremely blessed. We are. We're very, very lucky to have That's great. so many people that are supporting us and are willing to go the extra mile for us. So. Right. And I see, because we're so fortunate, I see that in our parents, in Juan's mom and in my parents, for them, it's more about seeing their children happy. They're going to accept their their children's spouses because they see how happy we are. Mm-hmm. 
that's the only thing that they're concerned about, whether we're ma- we're in a healthy relationship. Yeah. So all like cultural differences aside, that's the thing that matters most. Yeah. If if for the family, the the skin tone or the culture is a problem, hopefully they're willing to make that compromise of like, yeah, it's this person is making my child happy and that's the most important thing Mm -hmm. and maybe that opens the conversation as you said to be able to change those views those mindsets because there's always going to be it's always going to be difficult there's always going to be friction but you can change people can change their minds later on and they can learn that like oh that thing that i believe for 50 years i think there was something wrong with it i've experienced it myself i think my, my my grandparents have had have changed their views especially because they they didn't consider the possibility of the grandchildren to leave the country to go literally to the farthest part of the world that's not outside of earth yeah be exposed to different people and and get married to someone who doesn't have the same experience it's like it doesn't give you that sense of security or like familiarity but they started to open their minds and then they were very gracious with Wendy and and it's more interesting. Like yeah. add a little flavor to my my pot. Exactly, I need that. Yeah. I welcome that, and I'm I'm so grateful that my parents welcome that too. Yeah, honestly, and they've been like, they've been so great, graceful and and wonderful and welcoming to me. And that's what it takes for them to meet somebody who breaks the stereotype. Yes, and shares their story, and we go, well, hell, like what? Why was I thinking bad about this person? Yeah. Like you're, you're awesome. Yeah. Like I want to meet more people like you. Exactly. Right. This is why you guys are a happy couple because your families love the other one yeah. uh, just as much, and that that is so freaking important in any relationship. It'll be interesting to see how we haven't um, had our ceremony yet, and I actually haven't met Juan's family yet in person, and they haven't met my fam. My family hasn't met his family. So once we do kind of solidify that, it'll be such a wonderful cultural exchange. Or everything comes down. We'll also, (laughs) or that, or that, (laughs) optimism. (laughs) But we'll have even more of a bond there and it'll be fun to be able to travel to each other's home countries and welcome his family to mine and vice versa. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you guys to be able to finally make it official. Thank you. Uh, especially outside the COVID times. That'll be, I, we're all looking forward to those mm-hmm. days. Thank you. Do you guys want to go ahead and plug your show and where people can find you guys? Sure, absolutely. So we have an Instagram account and a Twitter. Um, on Instagram, you can find us at A Journey for Wisdom. And our Twitter account is A Journey for Wisdom. Four is the number. Yeah, you can also email us at podcast at don't tell my grandma.com and uh, you can find us on apple Podcasts or spotify or anything at don't tell my grandma podcast we're always bringing the fun conversations to the table so your yeah, grandma might want to cover her ears yes <laughs> yeah i feel i feel like we threw grandparents under the bus on this episode let me just say <laughs> my grandparents were all very lovely people they were just you know products of their culture and time that's right Towards the end of their lives, uh, I can confidently say, I think they started to wake up a little bit more and and question things too. Lindsay, I feel like there was something left unsaid over there. Did I pass by you? No, I was I was just kind of wrapping up, you know, even though there may be folks in your life that I've I've heard where it's like, well, the cultural differences are just going to be too hard or, you know, there are preconceived ideas about certain cultures. Don't let that deter you from going and exploring that because I love the way that Wendy said, put a little flavor in my pot. Like some of the things I experienced dating someone from a completely different culture, different language, different everything were so fun and so cool. And the food was amazing (laughs) and just lots of really good things that did enrich my life, even though the relationship wasn't something that was going to last and be something that was that was a permanent thing. So I would say, yeah, definitely don't let the fact that there may be friction or bumps along the way or challenges deter you from experiencing that because it, it absolutely can work out so sorry just i just wanted to say that uh for the inevitable agent of the fbi or the cia that's uh listening to this episode i don't have a a, <laughs> a trench coat i'm not exposing myself that was just a joke <laughs> please please don't 
Please like, immigrate us. Yeah, please immigrate us. <laughs> We're good people. No, listen. He said as soon as he crosses over to the U.S., he'll stop pulling it out in public. Yes. And I think that's a great thing. Yes. I don't, I don't believe you. I mean, people don't change that quick, but hey, man, God bless you. <laughs> Check out their podcast. Thanks for listening to one of our bonus episodes. And we're going to keep pumping these out in between seasons. And we're really excited for season two because we're going to get more awesome people like Wendy and Juan on the show to talk through all kinds of taboo topics. And thank you, as always, to Tyler, who is asleep at the desk, and my (laughs) lovely wife, Lindsay, for adding in her two cents as always thank you thanks for having us us. it's been a pleasure talking to both of you it's been such a pleasure guys you know when you come to the u.s i won't be like crying but i'll be a little bummed if you don't try to make it to ohio (laughs) or at least invite me to arizona because i do like arizona (laughs) right yeah so we just went there and we had no problem doing it But now it's up to you to go to the goingtheirpodcast.com for the links to our socials and all the places that you can hear the podcast. On the next episode. My podcast is called the Illuminating Mycelium Podcast. Yeah, I'm not as funny as you guys, but. But you have great taste in humor. (laughs) (laughs) She even said, and I think psychedelics are very good for you. I had three scary ass episodes with some hallucinogenics, man, and I ain't going back. A lot of Christian concepts that we know about today trace their roots to paganism. Like just one big example right off the bat is the concept of communion or Eucharist. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that it actually traces back to a psychedelic Eucharist that was used by the Greeks. We are the orthodox ass wipers of Northeast Ohio. (laughs) We're we're saving the world (laughs) one ass at a time. Now bend your ass over. (laughs) So what did you think of this episode? Let us know by giving us a rating, leaving us a review, subscribing, sharing with a friend, or just shouting into the void. Maybe we'll hear it. This podcast is made possible by its hosts and Frame One Media in association with Lindsey Baker, Tyler Kubisti, Michael Madgar, Joe Kelly, and Bobby Thomas. 